Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for watching this video. This is our next installment of Confessions of a Fundraiser. So as you know, I'm Harry, I'm the Fundraising Support Officer at Dig Deep, and today we've got Ellie, so I'll let you introduce yourself, Ellie. Hiya, um, I'm Ellie, I'm a second year student at Derby and I'm going to be climbing Kilimanjaro in 2021 for the charity Dig Deep. Amazing. So yeah, you should have been Ellie should have been going this summer, so she would have yeah. uh, been out in Tanzania at the moment, but um, has had her trip postponed. So we're going to talk a little bit about Ellie's fundraising so far because she's had some very exciting um, and sort of innovative fundraising ideas. So do you want to start by talking a little bit about um, like your favourite fundraising ideas so far? Uh, yeah, so in lockdown, I started making polymer clay earrings. Um, that was definitely one of my favourites to do. It's been really fun because obviously it's quite creative. So I've really enjoyed it and I've been putting a bit of me into my fundraising because I like doing stuff like creative, crafty things anyway. So I thought, you know what, I'll just do this for fundraising. So yeah, that's definitely my favourite one. Brilliant. No, we've, uh, I've shared a couple of your pictures uh, on social media of your earrings and they're all beautiful and everything. Thank um, you. <laughs> you kind of, you worked up, it, so you started it on Instagram, but you're now running an Etsy shop, aren't you? Yeah, so um, I started on Instagram and obviously uh, not everyone has Instagram and some of like my dog dad colleagues were <laughs> started making Instagram just to buy my earrings. So I was like, you know what, this isn't practical. So I decided just to do it through Etsy so I can just send people the link and it's easier for people to uh, get onto it. And also it's, you know, other countries can buy from it. So it's a bit more widespread and yeah. Brilliant. No, it's really great. Um, it's really nice to see you kind of build it up from, like you say, starting on Instagram and then building up to your own little shop now which is really yeah cool. um so sort of moving on obviously i might might know the answer to this um but what has <laughs> been your kind of biggest challenge so like this year with your fundraising well definitely a lockdown um going into it, i just felt like i couldn't fundraise at all um all the sort of ideas i'd already had couldn't really necessarily go on straight away and it started to make me quite nervous about the deadlines but as soon as I started to sort of think outside the box, just actually sit down and just stop stressing about it, I came up some, with some ideas that could be done. So like the earrings, I also did some raffles online, um, started selling my clothes. It's as easy as that, you know, you, you look around your room and there's just stuff that you don't even use, you know. Um, and although it was hard to come up with all these ideas, it was definitely worth it. And coming up with the more unique ideas like the earrings feels a lot more rewarding than like, you know, generic uh, things that I've thought of before so even though they were harder to come up with um, it's more rewarding and the process has been fine in the end so yeah it seems that we were talking a little bit before we started recording and like you said it you suddenly just took off with your fundraising like you obviously yeah come in a bit but like you say once you got those ideas like nailed down of what you wanted to do it seems to have absolutely like flown by yeah I think sort of at the start you sort of well because that's obviously I, I was we weren't in lockdown it was more like uh packing shopping bags or uh, emailing your school and i did try to do all those things and my school ignored my email <laughs> some places right. didn't want to pack their shopping bags and it was just like all those little ideas i didn't actually raise that much money at the start i mean i made an odd bit of money here you know my family gave me like 20 quid or whatever but it was actually in lockdown when i just started coming up with unique ideas that i wouldn't have even thought of before and necessarily weren't on the, weren't necessarily on the list that you like gave us as ideas that's where i made the most money and that's where it felt most rewarding so yeah definitely um it really took off in lockdown yeah brilliant it's really it's obviously really nice to see i've been like when i've been doing fundraising or workshops and stuff i've been like singing your praises because i just think it's <laughs> awesome how you have done that kind of streamlining process and that is kind of like a silver lining of lockdown if there, yeah, if there is one um that it does make you maybe think of more innovative and especially for you like creative ways of fundraising yeah. and something that you enjoy um yeah. so like looking at your fundraising page and stuff i've seen like loads of uh sort of donations coming in from like ebay and i've yeah, seen yeah. like your clothing and stuff that you're selling yeah it's it's mostly clothing but also just like it's little things like um my nanny will have um she because she used to do quite a lot of knitting and sewing and she has like quite old-fashioned um papers of all like the different techniques and stuff and it's just little things like that like that obviously my nanny doesn't use anymore but some people collect them and my nanny was like here you go you just have them or like I said my clothing that I haven't worn since like I was in school like it's just little things like that that you you don't necessarily think about selling or getting rid of but at the end of the day you don't need it and it is like definitely because I put on there like I'm doing it for Kilimanjaro or whatever um, and for the charity Dig Deep uh, people don't mind spending that you know bidding that little bit extra more and 
that has that's raised a decent amount of money the ebay so yeah definitely like um i at the start i was like no one's gonna want this but people do want the stuff that you don't want so it's amazing it's uh one man's trash is another man's treasure or yeah, yeah literally yeah <laughs> it really does work out um so obviously like you've spoken about how you've developed your fundraising and things like that um but what do you think is like the if you had to pick one thing that you've kind of learned from the experience uh so far what do you think that would be um I think I've learned that even during the difficult times of lockdown or the times that I thought were stressful, that I still wanted to help other people that were less fortunate than me. Um, I think, and I think a lot of people think feel like this, especially as students and stuff, when we don't have much money ourselves, uh, that you, you think fundraising is going to be impossible. But I've learned that it's actually so heartwarming to see how much your friends and family and even strangers, like the people on eBay, want to help the course just as much as you. And there's always people less fortunate than you. And it's a really rewarding process um, to fundraise for those people. Brilliant. Yeah, it's definitely just finding your niche and finding like yeah. what works for you. And that's kind of like one of the reasons we wanted to start these like videos and blog series is to show that everyone does fundraise in a different way. So yeah it's definitely. really nice like to see like you compared to like the people who we've spoken to before it's all so varied and that whilst it can sometimes be disheartening like you were saying about like your school not writing back to you <laughs> yeah. like that. obviously that's like that can be at the time that can be really like you can take it really personally but then just bouncing back and then also yeah remembering what you're doing it for um and what you're raising the money for kind of for me personally when I was fundraising it really put stuff into perspective um yeah, and like, like made me more determined uh to fundraise so obviously yeah I think when you start making it about you like um how hard it is for you to fundraise and actually remember why you're doing it I think it's more rewarding when you stop thinking oh uh like, like I said I was like oh the school like I was such a good student why are they not replying to me I'll send them another email and it's like just move on and find something else that fits you better and that helps the cause more and also remember it's not about you <laughs> like obviously yes climbing the mountain and stuff that's an amazing experience but it isn't about you and that's not why you went into doing it so yeah amazing yeah no that's great that's some top advice it's definitely something that I think is really important um do you have any other tips that you would pass on to fundraisers um, um I'm struggling probably just carry, like it's basically what i've just said that we're all in the same boat i mean a lot of us stu are students i know not everyone is but we all have to raise the same amount so if i can do it and like, other people can do it you can too um don't leave it to the last minute and just try not to overthink it like i think definitely at the start like i said i didn't make much money at the start because i was like i have to follow these ideas exactly or my school hasn't replied to me or that shop hasn't replied to me and I just kept overthinking it like I can't achieve these things that but like I said other people are achieving them and we have the same goals so you can as well so just make it fun and uh, make it re rewarding and fun and it'll make you more excited for the climb and it'll take the stress out of it just stop overthinking it and making it stressful because it's not meant to be a horrible thing it's meant to be you know it's meant to be an exciting process so yeah Great, that's incredible. Thank you. No, that sounds really good. I think remembering as well that you are climbing at the end of it, obviously, because I know yeah. it gets lost um, kind of in the process of fundraising when it gets maybe a bit overwhelming and stuff. And obviously, for like you guys who it's now two years uh, to climb mm -hmm. since you signed up, but obviously now with like you've hit your first deadline and stuff, which is awesome. Um, like now you can really look forward to doing some more chilled out fundraising over the next few months and also. Yeah getting excited for the climb again like yeah i mean this might be a bit over the top but if you really can't visualize what what the end, end thing is then maybe print out some pictures of kilimanjaro or of you know the extended things like the safari and put them around your room and remember that is what you're going to be getting and you know print out the number of money how much money you were raising for this charity you know that, that's the end goals and it's, they feel like big goals but as soon as you stop overthinking it and chipping away at it, it like like i never thought i'd be able to get fundraiser of the month but here we are do you know what i mean it's i think it's just overthinking it and then they're not as big as it's not as big as the goal as you think at the start so yeah that's great honestly it's excellent. it's so nice to like sit and chat to you about it because it's so nice <laughs> you're so excited after yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. well i can imagine it's been like a stressful uh, few yeah. months coming out the other side and like 
you're still so positive about it. It's really nice. Thank um, you. Yeah. So obviously we talked about like your personal fundraising and things like that, but what's been your favourite moment so far? Um, I mean, it's because obviously it has sort of been delayed a little bit. Um, it's also sort of been pushed back and we haven't really got into like those aside a few weeks before. But uh, when I was still at university, me and a friend actually signed up to uh, climb Kilimanjaro together. So I think one of my fav most favourite moments is we just sat down in the library one day and we were just watching YouTube videos of like other students that have done it before us and you know people take amazing videos up at the top or like their journey up and looking at pictures of the extended um, travelling that you can do afterwards and it just got me so excited for the trip and it takes out the stress of fundraising like I said because you know what you're going there for so yeah I think just seeing my friend and actually like watching videos I mean there's all sorts on YouTube like of what to pack and loads of stuff like yeah. it's like a whole like thing so yeah I think that and just seeing other people do it is it was really fun yeah I really enjoyed that that's really nice I think it's really just getting excited about it I think is yeah is very like underrated like just what like you say watching those videos and things like that and it's quite a nice rounded moment because you're now going to be on that YouTube channel um I mean yeah and it, I mean obviously we get shown pictures and stuff when we went for like the meetings to see if we want to sign up and things but when you actually see these videos of just like what they've taken themselves it's, it's just that it's just as good quality as the ones that you get shown in like the sign up meetings you're like nothing's been like um you know it no, it's all what's the word that i'm trying to look for like hello yeah it's what it is yeah what it is. like it's all it's just as amazing as you thought it'd be like you know when you see these amazing pictures when you sign up and you're like oh does it quite look like that though did, did somebody just quite look like that you're like actually these people that you know just doing youtube videos have shown it just the same so yeah it's just it, really exciting yeah it's just like that yeah it's yeah it's incredible and yeah. It's going to be like we do. We we make a point of on like our website and stuff. The pictures that we use are all from people who have climbed. We yeah, exactly. Yeah. I guess there's that um kind of from what you said that continuity of when you were like going to the information sessions, like you said, and then actually being able to see that in people's videos that they've made from their own yeah. experience. Like it is going to be incredible, and I'm I'm very excited for you. Like I know it is. Thank you. <laughs> further away than ever before but um I just think you're gonna have an incredible time and it's it's been really like nice to be chatting with you throughout lockdown and seeing your kind of journey to where you are now and obviously it's Thank very you. excited to see what you come up with for the next year because uh, I've got know. a few ideas yeah <laughs> but yeah it's it's the ideal time to be planning and like say you've now got uh what would we say 10 months before your next your final target yeah. so plenty of time to do uh, some trial and error with fundraising as well if there's any sort of different ideas you wanted to try out so that's great yeah. okay well amazing thank you so much for talking to us um obviously what i can do is if anyone does want to buy any of Ellie's earrings or anything like that I'm more than happy to share the link with you because they are absolutely beautiful um yeah. and you know we can share your etsy shop link um in kind of a little bio bit um, but yeah, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, I thank, will you for catch up. thank you. I will catch up with you soon. Um, but yeah, thank you for all your fundraising and all of your hard work. We really do appreciate it. And we're very, very excited to see you out in Tanzania next year. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to you later. See you later. Bye. Bye.